and uh, yeah, he brought this two tables and machines basically. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? Oh, sure. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what we're, what we're seeing here in action. All right. This is a Teletype Model 33. It's a, a mechanical computer terminal, and it dates to the mid-60s. Wow. And uh, it's connected. Right now, we're logged into this uh, silicon graphics machine. Um, the big one without, no, the one without the case. Right oh, the one without the case. Oh, the one without the case. Yeah. Something weird happened, I think they locked me out. Oh, no, I'm logged in. Uh, so this is a teletype, so you can actually program and then it prints out over here, am I correct? Well, this is a punch card. So this is a printer and a paper tape punch, yeah. and then there's a paper tape reader and a keyboard. So anything that comes in, you can display on the screen, uh, printer, or you can print it out on tape. And then you can take your tape that you've punched earlier and just load it in through the reader, which is the same as just typing it in from the keyboard. Amazing. So it's just a serial terminal. It's like the hardware version of the, the DEC VT102 that you see up there, which has a screen, but it has the same functionality. Now this is a bit slower because it's mechanical, so it only does 10 characters a second or 110 baud, whereas this one will go much faster. You can print a whole screen at once. 110 baud, wow. 110 baud. 10 characters per second. String. 10 characters per inch. Amazing. Right? So uh, as, a, as a backup mechanism, this is great, but it's low density. It's, uh, yeah. How hard is it to maintain yeah. this machine in this day and age? Like, like, are the components hard to find? Is it like, is it like, it's really hard to maintain, isn't it? There's, so they, they sold a lot of these in the 60s and 70s. Um, they were kind of the standard terminal for the early mini computers. Right. So um, altogether, I think they made around 600,000 of these machines. Oh, Most of them have gone to scrap, but there's still plenty of them li lying around. So you're using parts um, from the other machines to maintain yeah. the ones that are working. Yeah. And there's a few people who, who are really good kind of service engineers for this, right. who, who are still around and will help kind of maintain them. Um, so the thing that I have fun with is connecting them to like modern computer systems. Like LGR style? Or well, <laughs> like here, where we're connected to all of these Unix systems, some of them from the 80s and 90s. They all speak the same language. It's like we can still do modern computing stuff with this 60s era So machinery. I find that very interesting you say that. The reason I brought my daughter here uh, to the Vintage Festival is to learn about where this technology came from and where yeah. we are at today. Yeah. Right? And she, she's like, why? I'm like, because if you learn about where it was yeah. in the past, yeah. you'll understand better why we're at where we are at today. Yeah. And also that some of the fundamentals, I mean, this this is the machine. Fundamentals, that, right? These basic concepts that yeah, are, yeah. still exist today and, right. and work today. So when Kem Thompson and Dennis Ritchie wrote Unix in like 1969, 1970, they used a PDP-7 micro, micro, uh, mini computer and they had one of these as the terminal for it. So this is the kind of machine that they sat at to write the Unix operating system. Wow. And that's the OS that's inside of your phone. Correct. And essentially, it's a descendant, right? That's the OS that's running in your Mac. In, in Windows 10, it has a, a Linux op, uh, uh, subsystem. It's like that stuff, you can trace the, the, the whole Origin, line. Yeah. And some of the things that are, that are kind of the very basics of how to work with a terminal are, haven't really changed. They're exactly the same. So I found something very interesting. I asked my daughter about like what she's learning in school, and she's like, we're learning Gmail. Yeah. I'm like, Gmail? Yeah. I'm like, when I was your age, we were typing basic on a Commodore 64 and yeah. Apple II. Yeah. And it's just amazing that they're, they're regressing, I feel like, the education. They're dumbing the kids down. They don't teach them how to type. And the and the and the printer and the keyboards I feel have regressed as well. If you go on a type on a Model M versus what you see on the Apple yeah. computers, it's like it's like night and day. Model M is beautiful. beautiful. Model F is beautiful. Beautiful. Try typing at this for six hours, you will have painful fingers. Painful fingers. Huh? So in some ways we've gone forwards and some back. That's I mean, this is better than my phone keyboard, I think, but it's it's work. Yeah. What's your name, by the way? Hugh. Hugh. Okay, yeah. Hugh. And tell me, what is your affiliation with the Vintage Computer Festival? Like, uh, are you a volunteer or...? So I just brought this machine here because it's a cool machine. Um, so 
I was just going to attend and turn up and, and visit the show. And then I saw the list of some of the things they were bringing to the Unix exhibit. And that this is the 50th anniversary, in many ways, of like the beginning of Unix. And that Ken Thompson was going to be here talking about that. And so it's like, you've got to have a teletype at this show. Because yeah. so, that's what they programmed it on. Because, yeah, that, this, is, this is one of the lizard brain Unix things. So, wow. Yeah, and how can yeah. people follow you? Are you on social media at all? Or? Oh, sure, yeah. So I'm on uh, Twitter as 33ASR, which is Model 33. And the ASR stands for Automatic Send and Receive because it has paper tape, right? So that's 33ASR. And you can find me on Twitch TV as 33ASR as well. And I'll do Twitch stuff a couple times a week, intermittent schedule. But check out some of the, like, I just log on and, like, hack away at the keyboard and do whatever seems like fun. Awesome. Do you mind showing me just a little bit, like, if you, how it works a little bit? Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's a Unix machine. So um, I'm connected to the, one of these Silicon Graphics things over here. And so all of the Unix commands, um, like who will tell me who's logged on? Or who will tell, will tell you who's logged on? Yeah, w. This is like this is just Unix commands. But I'm connected in just the way that you would be if you were sitting at the machine working the keyboard. But it's remote. So it's a, it's a terminal. That's what terminals do. Uh, so how much time? Here's demos that me logged in from this IP address. I'm connected to the network. And there's another user called Guest, and they're running the shell. Um, and uh, you can do anything. Um, what's in my home directory? Oh, there's probably things that I can't use because they require like a graphical screen. Oh, I understand. But uh, yeah, it's just Unix. Thank you so much for your time, and then uh, I'm gonna definitely post.